Thank you, Simon, and thank you to everyone who's come along this morning. Simon's asked me to give a brief overview of Data Connect and then a tour of, of the system itself because it's only accessible on the University of Adelaide network. So unless you're on the network or watching today, you won't be able to get into the system externally. Now I should have the presentation slides up there, but Simon, stop me if you can't see them. I, I think um, everyone's familiar with um, the metadata stores program from ANS, and Data Connect is of course the University of Adelaide's metadata store. Now the need for a metadata store or a research data registry was first identified as a key service for the University of Adelaide through a research ICT review that was conducted in 2011 by our IT strategy and architecture group. And actually at the same time in 2011, in the library we were running a ANS funded Seeding the Commons project which we called Showcasing Research Data. And that project, that project indicated that there was strong support from our research community for the development of a repository and a metadata store. So when ANS had the opportunity to, uh, to let's just put that back on the PowerPoint. So when ANS had the opportunity to, to participate in the metadata store program, obviously it was a good timing for us to get on board. Just by way of background, uh, Research Metadata Store began just over a year ago in April 2012 and ran for 12 months, so it's just concluded last month. And we engaged a company, a local software uh, solutions company called InnerDev for the solution delivery. I worked alongside InnerDev as the project officer throughout the project, and one of the first things that our project team did was to conduct a comparative review of different candidate metadata store solutions and an outcome of that review was the selection of Redbox as our preferred software platform. The Redbox uh, project team have worked very closely with us, that is um, Duncan Dickinson and Andrew Brazardi from QCIV and I would like to take this opportunity to thank them both very much for their input which has been invaluable throughout the project. The bulk of the work that we did in our project team was design work to accommodate a researcher self-registration workflow into the Redbox platform and we achieved this through developing an online form uh, to capture collection metadata. There was also obviously work to integrate the Mint part of Redbox with our university systems for metadata about people and projects from our, from our HR and our human, res uh, sorry, our research management system. So our online form, which we'll have a look at shortly, is available to all researchers at the University of Adelaide for self-registration of their data sets and data collections. However, the workflow is specifically triggered around Category 1 grants and when those Category 1 grants are marked as closed in our university's research management system, that triggers an email to the grant's chief investigator alerting them to Data Connect and suggesting that they log on to register their data set. Now of course, having said that and, and having built that workflow into the system, we do encourage interaction with Data Connect for all research projects and investigations at the university and of course at any stage of the research life cycle, not necessarily just at the conclusion. And part of my role as research data librarian is to promote this and, and promote uptake of Data Connect at different stages of the research life cycle. To put it in a visual diagram, um, and if you're familiar with Redbox, you, you be familiar with the um, 
second part of this workflow, the email is sent to the chief investigator who can then log on and enter a description of their collection in Data Connect, at which point we source information from the Mint to um, complement that record. And those records are then curated by library staff before being published out to Research Data Australia. Now I did mention that Data Connect is only accessible on the university network, so it's closed to University of Adelaide researchers, although the records themselves are of course publicly visible on Research Data Australia. So the purpose of today's presentation really is to give you a bit of a tour um, being outside of the university so you can see what this, the uh, self-registration workflow and the Data Connect form look like. Before we get on to that, I do want to talk briefly about the Capture, Site and Connect branding that we've built around Data Connect. Uh, we chose a name for Data Connect very early on in the project and part of the reason for that was to have a strategy and a brand around the system and we felt that having a name was central to our communication strategy and having these three concepts capture, site and connect meant that we had some structure to our communications. So the capture element of Data Connect is of course about the Data Connect online form where researchers can capture a description of their data set or their data collection, including all the metadata that you're familiar with in the RIFCS standard. The site concept is of course about using the lookup functionality in Redbox to look up against the Mint for records of people and projects that may be associated with the data set and that information as I mentioned is from Research Master which is our research management system at the University of Adelaide and from PeopleSoft which is our HR system here and obviously we're also integrating uh, our metadata with the um, activity and party infrastructures um, so that our records are aligned with the ARC and NHMRC persistent URLs and the National Library of Australia um, identifiers that are retrieved through Trove. The final concept is central because it's part of the name, Connect. Uh, at this, this stage of the um, of the workflow we're concentrating on publishing the records. So building around that idea of visibility for research data um, not only within the University of Adelaide but publicly on Research Data Australia as well. And these three concepts were, were chosen partly because they hook into the reasons that we think people might be convinced to use Data Connect and they are namely um, compliance and record keeping reasons and of course visibility and profile boosting reasons. So using Data Connect um, is not only something that people might do in order to be more compliant with the Australian Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research but at the same time something that people will hopefully do because they understand the benefits of uh, promoting their research and their research data through Research Data Australia. For those in the audience today who want to see the visual layout of the technical architecture, this diagram will hopefully give you an indication. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side in the furthest left box, we are sourcing metadata for party and activity records from those institutional sources of truth. And on the right hand side uh, you can see a box representing the handle server that we have integrated with Redbox and the Mint so that all of our collection activity and party records are assigned uh, obviously a unique handle. What isn't represented on this diagram then is the feeds to external systems. So there is an EAC CPF feed to Trove for our party records and of course OAI PMH feeds to Research Data Australia. Um, if anybody is interested in further details uh, we have 
place the reusable software outputs from the project in GitHub repositories and I can certainly provide the links if anyone would like to see those. So I think at this stage it might be a good opportunity to move away from the visual diagram and have a look at the thing in the flesh and I'm just going to try and share my screen so you should be able to see the home page of Data Connect at the moment. Um, it's a very um, clean home page and at this level you can search or browse records. Currently we have two published records in the system but rather than stopping here I think we can log in and take a look at what the workflow looks like once people have entered. Now I should mention as I'm logging in that I have administrator rights for Data Connect so the screen that I see is uh, more complex and provides more options than what our research community will see when they log in. If uh, you're familiar with Redbox, this will look very familiar. It uh, obviously has the same review stages that, um, that Redbox users would be familiar with. And when a record is submitted by a researcher, it goes into the investigation stage. So there are none pending at the moment. What perhaps is um, new or different about uh, this, this screen is the unsubmitted um, stage in this review stage menu and this is for records that people have begun to create but have not yet been completed. There is the ability to um, in the system to start a record and save it and not submit it and if that's the case uh, people will have records sitting in the unsubmitted review stage here. As you can see, I've, I've got a number of untitled records there because I go in and um, play with the system uh, to show people in demonstrations such as this one. So let's have a look at what the form looks like. It's when a researcher logs on, simply called describe my data, but because I have administrator rights, the additional information research form, researcher form appears in brackets there. And if we load the form, oh, I think my screen sharing has just paused because there was an error message but hopefully it's still sharing. There was an Internet Explorer message pop up. Kathy, I'm, I'm Kathy, I'm seeing the screen describe my data. Oh, good. Okay. I think yep. everything's all right then. We'll <laughs> we'll see. We might encounter some problems as I progress down the form because I wasn't able to click on the um, on the Internet Explorer message, so it might have changed the configuration of the form. I'm not sure, but we'll have a look as we go through. So. Uh, what, what we can see here then is the metadata details that we ask our researchers to submit when they're notifying us about a data set or data collection. The form is quite straightforward and every field, every field has a question mark icon for further information. I am getting error messages from GoToMeeting saying the screen sharing is not working but I'm assuming you can still see it, so I'll, I will plough on. Um, so obviously the title element is um, the title of the data set. The description field is for the description. These are the same fields that you would see in RefCS, so I'm not going to go through and explain them all individually. We've also added retention period and extent or quantity, which are, um, they are native mandatory fields in Redbox, so we we decided to keep them there uh, as with data size as well. The coverage is of course the temporal and geographic coverage of the data set. Um, there is a map widget which hopefully is showing now to select the date coverage. There's also a uh, map widget built in but I think it's been disabled at the moment with the go to meeting screen sharing. So unfortunately yeah, it's yeah. the, the actual widget. We can see the widget box, but not not the map. 
Okay, unfortunately I won't be able to show you that then, but it, it is, anyone who is familiar with Redbox will have seen how that works. It is um, essentially the same as it is in, in Redbox. Uh, we of course have our field of research codes which can um, be selected and keywords for the researcher to add as well. We have a physical and electronic location and by default we've put the University of Adelaide's postal address in there so that people don't have to retype that every time but that field is editable so people can go in and add further details or of course delete the postal address and put in something that is more relevant to them or of course an electronic location if they have a URL uh, for the published data set it can be entered here. In terms of our rights statement, we have um, had some discussions with our legal and risk team about how to best approach this and we've narrowed the access rights down to three different options. Uh, the first is access to the data is available via the link provided and the URL bo uh, box below this field provides uh, a means for entering that URL. The second option is access to the data may be available under certain conditions. Please contact the data custodian for further information. And the third option is no access to the data is currently allowed. And we felt that those options would probably suit the majority of cases, but if you look at the drop down help text under this field, there is of course provision to have alternate metadata entered. If none of the statements are appropriate, users are encouraged to contact the library to digital services team to, to discuss including some other text or statement in that metadata field. The creators section is of course a lookup of the records in the mint. And I'll just do a quick look up of myself. Actually, let's see if I can move that. Now I'm not sure if you can see this box, but it does provide the option for me to select myself from the list of search results. And once I have done so, I can indicate that I'm chief investigator. That then links through to the record in the mint, which at the point of publishing this record will be published also. There's also a lookup functionality for projects which is again based on records in the Mint and if we type in a keyword or a grant number, either of those options um, will work, then we can choose which project is relevant for, for our data set. We can of course enter publications, we can enter website details, we can enter notes and then we can enter details about whoever is completing the form in case there's something that needs to be verified at the curation stage and we need to contact the person. Now let, I'll just scroll to the top and make sure all the compulsory fields have some text and then we should be able to submit the form. And we get a uh, success message displaying there to say the record's been submitted. So it's at that point of the workflow that the record is then put into the investigation stage. Our um, uh, library staff then log on and can see it waiting there and begin begin the curation of the um, of the record um, and ultimately publishing, which I won't go into now because we don't want to publish this record. I will go back to sharing the uh, PowerPoint now. Hopefully that's back on screen. Yes. Excellent. Okay. I wanted to touch very briefly on some of the hurdles that we encountered during the project and obviously any, um, any project is going to come up with hurdles that will span the technical and the organisational and the change management aspects of the project. Uh, we certainly found a lot of challenges in working with the metadata in the system and that was largely because a lot of that metadata was outside of our control. It was from 
institutional sources of truth uh, for which other organisational units were responsible. And that presented complications in determining the correct mapping of that metadata into the appropriate fields in the Mint. So we found, for example, that some fields in the university systems were being unexpectedly used for information that couldn't be published, such as administrative notes, which meant that, that we couldn't reliably use that field in Data Connect because it had the potential to, um, to publish information that wasn't really appropriate to be shared. And in that case, we had to revise our metadata mapping to account, to account for those kind of factors. Uh, of course, hang on, let's go back a slide. Of course, um, if you've worked on a metadata stores project, you will know that there are a number of system components, including external systems uh, on which the metadata store is dependent, and that does present a number of hurdles for troubleshooting. It is a very complex workflow when you have this many systems and dependencies involved and it can mean that tracking down and isolating errors does require very thorough and quite time consuming detective work which which um, which can be uh, quite complicated and trying at times as I have experienced. We also found some initial confusion with the red box curation and publishing workflow until we really thoroughly understood how how it worked and how the curation of a single party or activity record could hold up the publication and curation of other records linked to it. And of course there were the external constraints with Trove or Tim and needing to check these manually to confirm at what stage a party record um, had progressed to in, in the workflow and the publication. But all of these hurdles are not by any means impossible tasks, they're just factors that, that take time and we did find that we had to invest a significant amount of time during our project to work on understanding and tweaking the metadata and the way the metadata moves through the workflow. So now that we're live, in terms of what's next, we are of course focusing on communication and socialising of the system. Um, and growing a culture of data management at the University of Adelaide. We are just about to release this week a Data Connect video that we've put together explaining what Data Connect is in a nutshell and we're also working uh, over the year on training for early career researchers about research data management. We're also liaising with uh, uh, the faculty research committees and particular research institutes and centres to look at plans for rolling out Data Connect and um, work, working with individual research teams or projects or, or centres to apply Data Connect to them. The day-to-day -day management and curation of Data Connect is, uh, as you will have seen earlier, undertaken by the University Library's Digital Services team, which is led by our Digital Services Librarian, Vanessa Barrett, and we have some technical support from the University's Technology Services area as well. We're also es establishing a governance committee to provide some overarching guidance and direction for Data Connect, and my role as Research Data Librarian is to support that and to promote and encourage outreach activities that, that will see more awareness of Data Connect and, and application of Data Connect. So that's my very brief, brief overview of Data Connect and a quick tour. I'd um, like to thank everyone in the project team and, and Anne's as well for, uh, for helping us, particularly Andrew Williams, our client liaison officer here in South Australia. It is very early days for Data Connect, but I think we are very pleased with the result and the outcome so far, and it's just a matter of growing and growing from this point forward. So I'll hand back over to you now, Simon, and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Cathy. Uh, it's great to see these, these projects coming in and, and the things that are emerging from them. Um, I'm just going to unmute everybody with the request that if those that haven't muted themselves, mute themselves unless you want to ask a question. 
I can see some people still haven't muted themselves. It's, it's just that we get audio feedback. Um, so if you haven't got a microphone, please use the chat box as Susan Robbins just has. And if you don't know where that is, it's, there's a sort of dashboard on the right-hand side of the screen with a little red uh, box with a white arrow in it. Uh, if you open that, you'll see down the bottom a chat box uh, for putting in questions. Uh, I'll, it, I'll read out any questions I see in the chat box and look for you in the list of attendees. Uh, so if possible, get you to ask them yourself. But for the moment, Susan has asked um, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Very interesting. How often do you update the Mint from your sources of truth? Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, Sue. Um, we have a materialised view of uh, the databases and, and the data that gets pulled into the Mint and that is refreshed every 24 hours. So if somebody, for example, changes their name, as soon as that metadata is updated in the HR system, 24 hours from then we should expect to see that change refreshed in the Mint. Great. Kathy, last week uh, Roderick Sadler, and I think he's, in, he's here, but he was talking uh, about the library having to adjust to becoming the publisher uh, and that there were all sorts of changes afoot there. Is, is, has there been a bit of change management in your library that, that you can talk about? Are you the only data librarian? Do you have enough data librarians? There's been, there's been um, a lot of changes, as you say, Simon. So the day-to-day -day handling of Data Connect is undertaken by an existing team, which is our digital services team, and they have responsibility, among other things, for our, um, our repository, Adelaide Research and Scholarship, our repository for publications. So they've taken on board this additional task as well. It's very hard at this stage to say what the operational impact on the team will be though because we just have not been able to uh, forecast usage of Data Connect and I don't think we will for some time until we, until we start to see more socialisation of the system. Um, we, we won't be able to have a clear picture or understanding of what the operational impact will be in terms of metadata curation. In terms of the research data librarian role, which is the role I'm in, that's that's been a 12-month role created uh, as a follow-on from the project to move Data Connect into production in, in the first 12 months. And it is a role that involves working very closely with our research and reference team within the library. And again, it is difficult to say what the impact will be because uh, at this stage we don't know how widespread the use of Data Connect could be. But certainly over the next 12 months I expect the, um, the interaction and awareness of Data Connect to grow and the role that our research and reference team play in that to grow as well. Thank you for that. Um, Richard at, at Deakin has asked you if the self-submission form is a core red box function or a Uni, Uni of Adelaide customization. Ah, uh, yep. Hi, Richard. It's it's a University of Adelaide customization. The um, form on the front end is is not core red box um, as such. No. Okay. Thanks for that. Now Griffith have a question and I, I, I'm hoping that I'm not sure who there is who is at Griffith, uh, whether it's that you're self muted, whether you have a microphone, uh, or it looks like it could be Samantha Searle. Ah good Samantha, would you like Sam, would you like to ask your question? I am here with some other people, but um, thanks, Kathy. That was great. We were just interested in why you chose the word "such" for that middle part of your branding strategy for something that seemed to us to be more about linking to the sources of truth. And we're just wondering whether you foresee that that might cause confusion or any difficulties in the future if you do want to go out and actually promote the data citation and 
from the researcher's perspective in terms of um, getting DORs and um, tracking the impact of the data sets in a kind of broader sense. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think I think you're right, Kathy, Sam. Yeah. Kathy, um, it was Do you a want me to repeat bit, the question? But, yes, I think it would be good because the sound wasn't too good there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly summarise your question again, Sam, if that's all right. So you've you've asked about the word site in that we're using in our branding of, of Data Connect, in terms of using the word site to mean linking to records from our institutional sources of truth. And your question is about whether this is causing confusion around the citing of data sets or promoting data citation um, and using DOIs, uh, tracking impact and so on. Yes, uh, to answer your question, yes, it, it could cause some confusion. Um, that's certainly true. The reason we chose the word site on a very fundamental um, basis was simply because it started with C and it fitted our 3C branding concept. But more broadly than that, we chose it because there's a bit of future proofing there. So even with the word um, capture, that could go two ways. It could, of course, refer to capturing the data itself, which at the moment is not something that Data Connect provides. And in terms of the word connect, that's talking about connecting uh, the records, the people and the projects and the data set and also making those connections visible on Research Data Australia. So there is a bit of dual use of that other word and there's potential development of the application of those words in the future. Um, so we've sort of left the door open in some ways by changing the branding around the word site to account for any future activities we, we might um, address in data citing and data citation. Uh, that said, it, the brand is not necessarily something that we're fixed on. It's not it's used in our presentations and communications, but it's not present anywhere in Data Connect itself. It's not something that's used in the system. So we do have some scope for changing and evolving that branding in the future. Thanks, Cathy. Susan uh, has a question that I, I was wondering about too, and that's in relation to the video. Uh, this is Susan Robbins uh, asking, are you able to share the video you mentioned? Yes, we, we will certainly do that. Uh, it's just been produced and um, will be shared internally this week, so I imagine I'll be able to send a link out later this week, if not early next week. But certainly we'll share that when it's when it's available. That would be great, because uh, if we can put, I'll put that link up on the blog when it's available. Thank you. That would be, that'd be excellent. Um, Simon Huggard had, uh, from um, La Trobe has a question. Um, in relation to GitHub, Cathy, do you have most uh, or, or all of your customization on GitHub? What's the URL reference? I think yep, that's yep. Well, probably in your project description on the website, isn't it? Uh, it is. Most of the most of the customizations are in GitHub. I don't think all of them because some of them are specific to the University of Adelaide. So the email notifier that goes to the chief investigator that I mentioned, that uh, is, is not on GitHub. But I think almost everything else is. And I'm just typing the URL into the uh, chat box. Okay. Uh, hopefully that's visible to everyone, if I can get my spelling correct. Um, so I've typed in the base URL, which is simply github.com forward slash inner dev hyphen au. And there are um, five repositories branched off that page that contain Redbox and Mint and Fascinator plugins. I'm pre pretty sure too, Cathy, if anyone... Um it can get to the ANS website. I think uh, our new commu communications person, uh, Shannon, has put that link up uh, in relation to your project on the website in a quick link. Okay, great. Yep. But if, if anyone can't find it, please feel free to email me and I'll send it to you directly. 
great. Um, Sharon Wise from UTS. Um, hi, Kathy. Sorry I was late, and I hope this isn't a question you've already addressed. How is access control managed in the front end from your Data Connect? Is it user based? It is. Um, so, in terms of accessing Data Connect at all, you have to be on the university network. Then, in order to log in, we um, we need your University of Adelaide credentials to log in to gain access to the system. And we have a um, user list framework that we are using to assign roles to the small number of library staff who need additional rights to the system. And that is literally, um, I think, six, six or seven people who have been assigned either uh, administrator or um, reviewer rights in uh, Redbox. We do use slightly different terminology to the Redbox user roles. If you're familiar with those, I think they are reviewer, uh, librarian and, and administrator from memory and we use slightly different terminology but we, we do control that, that um, access rights that way. I hope that answers your question Sharon, if not let me know. Uh, Jerry Ryder has a question. Um, does your roadmap include storing data and minting DOIs? Not at this stage within the scope of Data Connect. Um, certainly across the university, storing data is um, something that is being looked at by our technology services group and obviously we do uh, like any university provides secure storage and at this stage it's not integrated with Data Connect. Um, and at this stage there is no uh, move to mint DOIs in the near future, but we have our first meeting of our Data Connect governance group next month and I imagine these are some of the issues that the operational team will be presenting to the governance group. So I can expect that we will have some discussion about the future and the roadmap for Data Connect at that initial meeting and going forward at subsequent meetings as well. Thanks. Uh, Susan Robbins is, wants to have another look at your workflow slide. Yep. I okay. Think now, it's, it's probably one? not that visible uh, in terms of the detail of it. In the, what Let me see words. if I can. Is this hopefully not the, no, the orange one? This one? That's, that, um, Susan, I think she meant the, she's, the, it's the workflow. Uh, the, the previous yes, this one. She's saying it's this one. Yeah. The orange one. Okay. This is. Um, I should mention also, Susan. This is not a direct representation of the red box workflow. This is. Um, this workflow has been created for use with our research community. So it it doesn't necessarily match the technical level of detail that goes through the workflow. It's just a, a broad summary of how it progresses. Okay, well we'll leave that up while Susan studies it. And, and <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll ask you the sustainability question. <laughs> yep, um, go ahead. Because, uh, well I, actually I'm, I've got two questions. One is uh, about you know, what's the future of this? Where is the support going to come from? I know you've got this meeting coming up. Uh, next month. Uh, what's the who? Who's the business owner, and and what's it? What's the the sustainability look like? Mm. Well, the business owner of Data Connect is the deputy vice chancellor for research um, office, and he has charged the university libraries with the day to day management of Data Connect. Um, but of course, they're they're represented and uh, Pro Vice Chancellor Research Operations will be chairing that governance group that I mentioned um, that I mentioned earlier. Um, so the day-to-day -day management and sustainability on an operational level is, is really something that the University Libraries is responsible for. Uh, that responsibility rests in the digital services team. Um, and under the digital services librarian and it's a relationship that we currently see in 
the way that the uh, uh, university libraries supports our publications repository, Adelaide Research and Scholarship. So in that sense, the um, the team, digital services team, look after the day-to-day -day operational management of the repository and our research librarians are responsible for liaising with their faculties and schools um, and research disciplines to ensure that communication and support about the repository is in place. And I believe it will be a similar model um, for, for Data Connect as well. So it, the operational and the communications and outreach roles are separated in that sense. Um, and that, that's certainly something that works for the repository because the research librarians are the individuals who are in contact with, with their research communities and know those research communities um, and, and the people within them. So they're best place to, to do that liaison work. Um, but the role of research data librarian is in place uh, at least for the next year and we'll be progressing as much as we can through this role um, to support ongoing sustainability through digital services and research librarians. How many uh, do you have of those research librarians? Oh, I, uh, I think there's 13 or 14. I haven't counted okay. them. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, that's, that's interesting that you've got, there's quite a number. Yeah. There are, um, yeah. The, the other question I've got is, is in relation to researcher pro profiles or academic profiles. Um, it, does that fit into your roadmap to, that the university will uh, dr use this, use Data Connect to, to, as, a, as a, a source of these profiles or a way of assembling them? Sorry, can I just clarify your, your question, Simon? You're asking about researcher profiling and whether or not Data Connect has a role in that. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. yeah um, at this stage, the University of Adelaide profiling, researcher profiling is, is not something that's embedded in any um, system that we offer at the moment. I suppose looking down the track, there's certainly scope to do that. Um, and the University of Adelaide has an e-research strategy as a separate project, a separate initiative um, which, which could encompass that work. If at that stage we um, can see a role for Data Connect, I can imagine that we'd be talking to them, but um, it, it's not currently in place is the answer to your question. Okay, it's because um, I'm thinking of, of the way Griffith have their, their, their hub their research hub that's pretty much driven by uh, the access to those academic profiles in a way. Absolutely, and I can see, I definitely can see the scope for that here as well. Um, if, um, if it progresses to that stage, that would be something that Data Connect could definitely be involved in. Well, thank you, Cathy. Um, unless there are any more questions, uh, I can just see hearing. one more there, Simon, from, from Richard at Deakin. Oh, sorry. I've, I've uh, missed that. That's okay. I, I believe Richard's asking about the Data Connect LibGuide um, that we have. He's suggested it would be useful to have some print screens of the submission form so that outsiders can see the format. Uh, I can certainly go back and have a look at that guide. I don't have it in front of me of me at the moment, but it does contain a, a field by field summary of the um, the metadata represented on the self submission form. So if anyone wants to go to the LibGuide um, and download the Data Connect guide, the user guide, they're more than welcome to do so. Okay, now in fact there are two more questions that I can see now. Uh, Simon Huggard has asked you to say a little bit more about the OSB services, what is this? And Beth Crawford is um, just wanting to clarify uh, something about the 13 or 14 research librarians. Sure. Well, Whether I'll these are the same people as the faculty librarians. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll tackle Simon's question 
first and I hope that I answer it sufficiently but if not Simon um, let me know and I'll try and track down further detail. Uh, OSB is the Oracle service bus, it's our middleware layer at the University of Adelaide and we're using that to facilitate the materialised view of the metadata in the PeopleSoft and Research Master databases. So we're not accessing them directly, we're accessing them through that middleware layer which is um, why the OSB box is present on the on the diagram there. I hope that answers the question. If not, please let me know, Simon. And in answer to Beth, yes, the research librarians are faculty or liaison librarians, um, but the official title for them here at the University of Adelaide is research librarians. Okay, I hope that's answered Beth's question. Um, and it looks like um, oh, there's a there's a link there from Deakin to to a Data Connect libguide, and it looks like we have answered Beth's question. Um, Kathy, I think we're running out of time now. Thank you. That was uh, a great presentation. Terrific so that you've got to this stage with the project, and thank you everyone for coming. Uh, it's been great to have lots of questions because uh, it always helps when there are uh, detailed questions about these these projects. Um, so, Kathy, I just want to thank you and thank you everyone for coming.